So hi, hello and welcome again, MicroPunter here and today I would like uh, to talk a little bit about microscope optics again, specifically about the three types of microscope objectives, the achromatic, the semi-apochromatic and the apochromatic objectives. I did receive a question and I think it's, in a very, it's a very interesting and also yeah, important question, but I would like to read it out first. Uh, then I would like to explain the question to those of you who do not, are not yet fully familiar with all of the, the terminology here. And then we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. So here is uh, the question. I'm contacting you because I have questions about high-performance microscope objectives apochromatic and semi-apochromatic. I understood the optical corrections made, but I would have liked to have testimonials in particular on the improvements in visual observation. They are very expensive and the experience of amateur microscopists cannot be found on the internet. I imagine, however, that they have real qualities. Have you been able to visually compare these high quality objectives with a plan achromatic objectives yourself? Thank you very much uh, for your response and your exciting videos. And of course, also thank you very much uh, for this question because questions like these also keep the channel alive uh, because uh, I would like to respond uh, to the problems that the community has and therefore I'm always welcoming questions here. Well, uh, first of all, a short um, explanation a little bit about these three types of objectives, achromatic, semi-apochromatic, they are also known as fluoride objectives and apochromatic objectives. And this is kind of also the sequence of, of, of cost. The achromatic objectives are the cheapest ones and the apochromatic um, objectives can cost, well, several thousand euros or dollars, just one objective. So there is a huge, huge uh, price difference. Um, so what are the advantages of the apochromatics um, ob ob objectives? Well, um, to explain this is uh, you, we have to understand a little bit the physics of light and to summarize it very briefly, um, if you use the cheaper objectives, uh, then if you zoom in a lot, what you can get is so-called chromatic aberration. And these are color fringes. In brief or in short, um, the white light of the microscope is going to be split up into rainbow colors um, because uh, the um, optics cannot focus all of the light uh, colors um, down to one point. And the higher corrected, more expensive apochromatic objectives are able to focus more colors of the spectrum down to one point and therefore you get uh, images that are clear, sharper, and um, there are also less uh, color fringes. And in order for you, me to explain to you what I actually mean with chromatic aberration, I would like to give you an, an example of very extreme chromatic aberration. And uh, I've chosen salt here. Uh, because so these are salt crystals under the microscope because um, uh, salt is colorless so it's basically black white uh, so any changes in color can be seen much more easily and the second thing is, is uh, that uh, salt crystals have a very high contrast and therefore you're also able to see the chromatic aberration better and uh, I'm going to show you this to you first and then I'm going to explain to you why in the world is there such a bad chromatic aberration here so um, here it is well, at a low magnification, the salt crystals uh, look uh, relatively normal. They're semi-dissolved, uh, so that's why they're a little bit rounded. But when we actually zoom in, we can see the so-called the purple and yellow fringing. Um, so on the on the corner, on the on the left side, you see that there is a yellow discoloration, and on the corner on the right side, it's a uh, purple blue. And uh, this is uh, pretty much everywhere. You see that uh, where there is a sharp, uh, stark contrast between bright and dark. And uh, when you look at the width uh, of the fringe, then this is probably around five or six uh, pixels uh, in diameter. Um, so we are already um, yeah, way beyond uh, the resolution limit here. Um, and here again, you see that uh, there are several, uh, several pixels uh, wide. Um, and for this reason, that um, if you do not zoom in, it might not uh, become apparent. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, if you don't even know what you're looking for, you might not even realize that uh, this is an issue. Um, but uh, again, this uh, image was taken uh, with uh, my USB microscope camera. So the intermediate optics um, of the adapter um, essentially caused uh, quite a bit of, of color discoloration here. Here again, a little bit more blue, even though the salt crystal itself actually is uh, just uh, black white. So why is the chromatic aberration so bad? Well, because I took uh, the picture with this USB microscope camera. And uh, the chromatic aberration is actually not from the microscope objective, maybe a little bit, but not so much. But look at this here, there is an, an adapter here. Um, and uh, this adapter destroys the image quality quite a bit as well. Um, and this already leads me to one important point here. There is no point in 
investing a lot of money in very expensive objectives if then the adapter um, over here for the USB camera or this here is a DSLR adapter it also has some optics here yeah if this destroys the image quality then then what's the point right um, so I'm just uh, saying that you have to look at the whole system and you have to not simply um, observe the parts individually but also how they actually work together so now that we understand what chromatic aberration is is I would like to now show you a side-by-side -side comparison and I'm comparing now a chromat um, a chromatic objective um, a standard one with a fluoride or semi apochromatic objective I myself do not own apochromatic objectives also because they're simply too expensive um, and uh, for this uh, but still I think the side-by-side -side comparison should already give you a very good imp uh, impression that there is already a, yeah, some improvement between the achromatic and the semi-apochromatic. I got to be careful a little bit with all the terms here that I don't mix them up but let's uh, start uh, the comparison. So now let's uh, try to directly compare an achromatic objective and a semi-apochromatic objective. Uh, again, we have to zoom in here. And uh, here we already see that there is uh, quite a bit of, uh, of pink uh, and a little bit of yellow-green as well. So chromatic aberration is visible. Um, but again, <laughs> I think uh, it doesn't disturb uh, quite a lot, especially when you only um, observe uh, visually. Here again, a, a salt crystal, and here there's something that I really want to show you, because when we zoom in, it's not really the chromatic aberration alone. Again, a little bit of pink here, um, but look at the horizontal lines that are visible, right? The, um, at, at the edge, there are these horizontal lines. These are diffraction patterns, and this is actually a good sign. It shows that the microscope objective is of high quality, because if you're not able to see those diffraction patterns, then this means that the objective is a little bit blurry and fuzzy maybe a little bit dirty um, and we also see those diffraction patterns over here and uh, I think this is important because it shows that uh, those diffraction patterns um, actually have a stronger effect uh, than the chromatic aberration itself um, so um, I think uh, this uh, kind of puts everything into perspective a little bit um, so that uh, chromatic aber aberration while present is, is probably far less uh, of relevancy than the simply the resolution limit imposed uh, by the microscope optics. So this is now a fluoride objective, a semi-apochromatic objective. And uh, when we zoom in here, um, we can again see those diffraction patterns. But there is far less uh, chromatic aberration visible. Yeah, there is far less discoloration. So we can see that uh, yeah, the objective takes uh, care of this uh, quite well. However, I did find a couple of spots where there is a little bit of color. Like over here, there is a little bit of, of, of blue, uh, also a little bit of, of uh, orange. Um, and I think that maybe this is not because of chromatic aberration of the objectives, but maybe this is because um, of the interference of the light rays due in the salt crystal itself. Itself. It's a hypothesis, huh? but this could also be uh, play a role here. Here again, we see those horizontal lines and diffraction patterns. Um, yeah, but it kind of illustrates a little bit that uh, there is um, quite a bit of a, a difference between the um, achromatic and the semi apochromatic objectives, and we can expect that the effect is even stronger when we uh, look at purely uh, apochromatic objectives. You hear a side by side comparison here that's the achromatic objective. Um, yeah, you see that there are a few rainbow colors visible, and here that is my fluoride objective, the semi-apochromatic. Looks much more neutral in color. Yeah, but I don't think that this is um, yeah, uh, yeah, a big uh, a big difference. So I think especially when you're looking at uh, water samples and and at other um, specimens that contain color, you might not notice that uh, so much. And I think it's also a question of, of expectations. I mean, if you want to have uh, a perfect image or without chromatic aberration, of course, you're going to be looking out that uh, there are none of these discolorations present. But I think uh, otherwise, uh, even the achromatic one is quite fine. So, okay, um, now uh, you would like to have uh, some concrete ad advice. Um, I made myself a little sheet here um, to, to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of apochromatic objectives. And the, the advantages, are, of course, uh, already mentioned that they have uh, um, yeah, a very sharp image because also they have a higher numerical aperture. And this basically means that the resolution is higher. It also has to do something that uh, more light rays are focused down to one point and more colors are focused down 
to one point and this gives you simply a, a crisper and sharper image. And the second advantage of course is, is that there is a no chromatic aberration or, sim or um, at least a significantly reduced uh, chromatic aberration. So um, this is are the main advantage po advantages but there are a whole range of, of, of disadvantages or, uh, or maybe not disadvantages but simply things that you have to consider as well. And one of them of course I already mentioned is the extremely high cost and this is uh, due to the fact that apochromatic objectives also have a rather limited area of application. So if you want to do photography um, then of course this might be something that you might consider if you want to do competitive uh, you know, uh, photographs then I guess uh, this is something that uh, is uh, certainly worth uh, looking into but um, otherwise it, these are not really end consumer products right uh, so they are not mass produced uh, to the extent and therefore also, of course the cost is higher. And another important thing yeah, your microscope must also be able uh, to accept those uh, objectives. I mean, modern uh, objectives, uh, if you buy them new, um, from a company, high-end companies usually make them, you need also a microscope um, where you can actually connect it to. Because otherwise, if you just buy yourself an apochromatic, expensive apochromatic objective and you cannot connect it to the microscope because your microscope is not designed uh, yeah, for that, then you cannot uh, put it on, right? So this actually also drives up the cost yet more. Um, another thing that you have to be aware of is, is that uh, those uh, apochromatic objectives have a much smaller working distance. This means that uh, the distance between the objective and the cover glass is significantly smaller. So you have to take a little bit of more care in sample preparation as well. Um, because if you use a lot of mounting medium and so on, then yeah, you might actually end up crashing the objective into the cover glass of um, the slide. Um, so specimen preparation is very important. Um, and then the, another disadvantage that I already mentioned is, yeah, <laughs> what about the adapter here, right? Um, what's the whole point of having a good objective if this here is the weakest link um, in the system? Um, so in other words, um, to summarize everything, um, yeah, basically uh, for visual work, probably not such a big advantage uh, because uh, you see the chromatic aberration mainly if you really zoom in a lot and then just by observing it, the image like this, you're not able to see the chromatic aberration quite as much. Um, so for photography, uh, sure. Uh, for visual observation, probably not. And um, yeah, if you want to um, go into that direction, then make sure that you are having some kind of a, a setup that kind of eliminates or does not make intermediate optics necessary. There are some microscope manufacturers uh, that allow you to connect a, a camera um, either over C mount uh, or um, like over DSLR um, without, uh, without intermediate optics. So the microscope objective and if it's an infinity microscope, also the tube lens, lens together project the image directly into um, onto the sensor of the um, of the camera, and therefore um, you do not have any intermediate optics that might actually degrade the image quality again. So what I'm seeing saying here is is um, yeah we gotta have a look at the full picture, um, otherwise um, you end up spending a lot of money for something and then you are actually disappointed <laughs> that you do not get the image quality uh, that you expected, right? Yeah, I think. Uh, uh, for me, that's it. That's all I wanted to share with you today. If you uh, yourself uh, have anything to add, if you have experience with the different types of uh, microscope objectives, please uh, do comment below. Um, yeah, and uh, I think for me, that's all I wanted to share with you today. I wish you all the best. Uh, happy microbe hunting as always, and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.